Okay, we're back. Our last set. We're gonna look at the. We got our beaker nice and clean, dried out. Repeat part B. Use two, two milliliters of water and use ammonia in place of lemon juice. So, we're gonna take our water and we're gonna take 20 drops of water and just like we did before, and we're gonna add 20 drops of ammonia to it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, that's our water. So we're gonna take our water, we're gonna add, we're gonna do the same procedure we've been doing, one drop at a time. I know it's repetitious, it's all for science. One drop. Now the water, remember, was what? 6.5, right? So we're gonna pull that out like that and we're going to swirl the water around because we didn't swirl it around. This drop number one, we're gonna check the pH of the water. Anybody wanna guess what it's gonna do? Oh my goodness, look what the water did. The water went from 6.5 down to eight, just like that. So the water went to eight on the first drop. Second drop. Boom. Now, one of the things you need to be thinking about is why does the water change so much? When we put the lemon drops in the water, it changed rapidly. When we put the ammonia in the water, it changed rapidly, 6.5 to eight, doom, just like that. But the milk and the lemon juice and the milk and the ammonia, it did not change as rapidly. It changed slower, and the question is why? All right, that's one of our big questions for this lab. Okay, I think we're looking at a nine. It went from eight to nine. Drop, swirl it around, just like that. Get our litmus paper out here. See, it takes a lot of litmus paper to do this lab, or pH paper, excuse me, not litmus paper. All right, we're still at nine. Give me another drop. Oh, I gave it two drops, dang it. So four doesn't count. Try not to do that. Don't get in a hurry like me, take your time. This lab might take two days to finish. It's a complicated lab. It's either nine or 10. Calling it 10. Okay, it's too bad I didn't have that drop four to be more exact. One drop, the second drop missed. Don't worry about it. Pull it out. Whoops. Pull it out. Get it down in there. Check it. Still 10. Another drop. Swirl it around. Take the other end of the pH paper. Stick it in there. Still 10. Get another drop. Swirl it around. Pull it out. Dip it in there. Compare it. Still 10. Give me another drop. There you go. I was more careful that time. This is drop nine. So we're halfway through this last set. So if you don't swirl it around long enough, looks like 10 again. 
If you don't swirl it around long enough, you might just drop the pH paper right down where you drop in the ammonia and that would give you a false reading because it would be more concentrated where you dropped it right in there, right? All right, I'll pull that out. Okay. Check it. It's a 10. Okay, you're gonna give me another drop here. Swirl it around. It's okay, you gotta write that 10 down. This is drop 11 coming up. Okay. It's 10 again. Okay. Drop. Boom. This is drop 12. Swirl it around. Oops. There you go. Still 10. Does anybody think it's going to get higher than 10? Probably not, because the ammonia at the highest point, the pure ammonia was 10, so how could it get higher than 10, right? But just for the sake of the experiment, we're still at 10, we're going to do the last few drops, okay? we got six drops to go. We can handle it. We can do it. Take it out. Pair it. Ten. Now you might see things differently than me. You might, uh, okay, you might call it a 10.5 or an 11. Okay. Take this one here. Oops. Take the other in. Check it. Still 10. Okay, we got about five drops to go. One. And this one is a 10 also. Okay. Got four drops to go. Oh, I put two drops in. So 17 doesn't count. Don't be sloppy like me. Be careful. These little droppers kind of leak sometimes, though. They squirt out a drop when you least expect it. Okay. All right. It's a 10. All right, we got two drops to go. Let's not mess them up, Mr. Smith. One drop. Okay. And we're going to swirl it around for 10 seconds. Okay. And we're going to pull out our pH paper. And we're going to check it. Anybody want to guess what it's going to be? You got it right. It's a 10. Kind of like me. And one last drop. That was a joke. There you go. Swirl it around. And one last test. Okay. Very good. Whoa. I lost the whole thing. Let me get it out of there quickly. For if you leave it in too long, it will leach it out. So the last one, 10, okay? So, in our lab book, we've got some good data here, and it's kind of hard to read something or determine something from this data. So guess what we're gonna do next? If you have your lab instructions with you, it says now, we got some questions to answer. Question one, so I'm gonna put right here. Questions. One. Question one says, at first with a pH of milk and water about the same. That means we would go back to here and we would look right here. 
Was the pH of water and milk about the same when we first started? Yes, it was. The answer there is yes. Okay? Okay. Question two says, make a line graph of the data collected from the table, from this table we just made. Make a line graph for water. So we're gonna make a line graph, not a bar graph. I know you guys love bar graphs, but we're gonna make a line graph. The water blue, the line for the milk red, the line for the milk, uh, number line for the milk that we put the milk one, that's with the lemon juice, red, the line with milk, line with milk two with the ammonia put in, green. Okay? Put the pH on the y-axis and the number of drops of juice on the x-axis, okay? Alrighty, so, and there's another one we gotta, we have to graph also, and it would be the last one here, the water with ammonia. We wanna make sure we get that one in there. I need to change the instructions a little bit. I wanna put that one, we'll make that one just regular black or something, okay? So we gotta, hey, look at here, what do we got? We got a piece of graph paper right there, okay? So let me grab a pair of scissors. Okay, I got my scissors, and uh, you could draw your own graph paper if you want to your own graph with your own lines, but you probably want to cut this out. Keep it over here so everybody can see what's going on. Okay, and come over here. Now, and you notice I'm kind of cutting along the line. I'll go like this, you know. Go right down the line. Don't be all sloppy. Okay. So there I got my, I got a cut, and guess what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to glue it in my lab book. Where am I going to glue it in my lab book? I'm going to glue it right there. There's a building DNA molecules right there. I started this lab a long time ago. So, I'm going to glue it right here, okay? So, let's see, I'm going to put it just like that, so i got to get some glue going here. You don't have to use a whole stick of glue, just enough to get it on there. All right, I'm gonna stick it on here. I'm gonna put it on there like that, right? That looks good, right? No, it doesn't look any good. You wanna put your graph paper on here nice and straight. Again, why do we have these pretty red lines and these pretty blue lines? So we can line everything up nice and straight, okay? There you go, there's our graph paper. Don't put it on there crooked. All right, are we, are we square here? Yes, we are. So this is question number two. I'm just gonna put a two up there. All right, and let's take that off. This says, put pH on the y-axis and the number of drops of lemon juice on the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. So, so this, is, uh, this is the number of drops. And this over here is the pH, right? Okay. And so guess what? If we if we count the rows, you're gonna count there's 20 on there. Mr. Smith made this just right for you. There's 20 going across because there's 20 drops, right? So we're just gonna go like this. Where do we put number one? We do we put it right here? No, that's not one, that's zero. So one goes there, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 is the last row, like, and the pH going this way. Now, how does the pH work? The pH scale goes from 0 to 14, right? So 0 is here, so pH 1 is there, pH 2 three, four, five, six, seven. That's neutral. 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've created a pH scale on the side with 7 as being neutral, right? Okay, so now we have to just, we have to enter a data that we have. And we got our colored pencils to do that with, right? Okay, what color are we going to make the water? The water with, uh, make the water blue, okay? The, uh, the water line blue, okay? So the, the water and the lemon juice, okay? So the water and the lemon juice, what did the, well, that's not blue, it's purple. What did the water start out at? Flip it over here, water started out at 6.5. So 6.5 on our chart would be right there. So before it started, that's at zero. I haven't put a drop in yet. Water is 6.5, okay? So follow along here. Make sure I'm here where you guys can see this. Drop one. Water went to four, it stayed at four till it got to drop eight. So, drop one, water went to four, one, two, whoop, 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 whoop. What am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? That's why we got erasers. It stayed at four for drop two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So, at drop number eight, water went to 3.5, and it stayed at 3.5 the rest of the experiment. So, drop eight, 3.5, 3.5. Water got down here, and it just stayed. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't go up or down, all right? So, I'm going to use a ruler to connect my dots with, okay, because it's just going to look better if you use a ruler. Okay, this is how we make a line graph. And it dropped down to 3.5, and it stayed at 3.5 for the rest of the experiment right there. So there's our water line, okay? I wanna make, I'm gonna redo these a little bit, make them a little thicker so we can see them better. Okay. So there's my water line, okay? All right, next one we have to do is we have to put in the, um, milk with the lemon juice. And I think we're gonna make that red. So let's find a red, I guess this is red. This is as red as I can get. Milk with lemon juice, red. Okay, so the milk with lemon juice, the milk started out at six. So I'm gonna put a little mark right here. That's where it started out. And the milk uh, with lemon juice went 5.9, 5.8. Drop one. 5.9, drop two, 5.8. And then it went 5.2 on drop three. 5.2, okay. And then it went to uh, five, and it stayed at five till we get to drop eight. So it goes down to five. There's four, five, six, seven, eight. And it dropped nine. It went to four twice. It went down to four, dropped nine and 10. And then drop 11, it went back up to five. And then it went down to four until we get to drop 18. So let's see, there's a four. Four's right here. Where's 18? Right there. Goes to four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And drop 18. What did it do? It went back up to five, right? Went to five. Whoops. Yes, five, five and 19. Or 18 and 19 are 5, 18, 
19 and 20 and went back down to 4.5. So we're gonna take our ruler, gonna connect our dots. We got kind of a straight line right there between the, the zero and there, and then it goes to here, like that. And it went like this. Then it dropped down. Went like this. One of the questions you guys got to try to figure out is why did it go back up? Which we see happen often in this experiment. If you do it right, sometimes it goes back up a lot more than that. This one here, it didn't only went up one. Uh, one mark on the pH scale. Sometimes it goes up two or three. And students are saying, did I do it wrong? Or what did I do wrong? It's, it went back up. And I tell them it's perfectly normal if it goes back up. Okay, and right here. So there's our line for the milk with the lemon juice. So this is the water with the lemon juice, milk with the lemon juice. Okay, what's the next one we gotta do? We got to do the uh, milk with the ammonia. We're gonna, what color are we gonna make this one? Green. Uh, we got a green. All right, the milk with the ammonia. The milk started out as what? Milk started out as, as six, right? Right there, so that's where it started out. Okay, what did it do? It went six, one, two, three, four drops, okay? It went one, two, three, four drops at six. Then it went to 6.5. Then it went to, oh, oh, I put that in the wrong place. Where's my eraser? There it is. I made those 6.5. Let me erase that. Okay. One, two, three, four. Then it went up to 6.5. Okay. Uh, after 6.5, it went to seven twice. So we got seven twice. And then it went to eight. It went to eight until we get to 13. So where's 13? 13's right there. Where's eight? Right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It went to eight. And then it went to 8.5 twice. And then it went back down to eight. And it finished at eight on the last three or four drops. Okay, like that, okay? So we're gonna connect our dots. There's what the milk and the ammonia did, okay? You gotta remember what we're doing here, milk and the ammonia. Okay, then it went up, almost a straight line there. Then it went here. Then it went up, it's climbing up. And then it stayed at eight for quite a few drops. And then it went back up to eight and a half. And then it went back down to eight. You'll see in a minute why we're making this graph. Okay, so there is the graph for the ammonia or the milk that has ammonia drops in it. We got one more to do. We'll make it, uh, uh, we'll just make it black. We'll just use a pencil, all right? This is the ammonia being put into the water or the water being, yes, the ammonia being put just into water, okay? So if you remember carefully, uh, uh, it start, what did the water start out at? The water started out at, 6.5 right here. This over here, we can see it. Okay. The water started out 6.5, and we put one drop of ammonia in and went eight. So it went from there, it went up to eight. After that, it went to nine, three times. One, two, three. Then it went to 10, and it stayed at 10 the rest of the day, okay? That's going to be easy. So we put our little line here. There. You guys can see this, I hope. And we go here. And then it goes up to 10. 
and then it just stays straight at 10 for the 20 drops all the way down like that okay all right so there's our graph so uh, you can see this is the ammonia drops put in pure water this is the lemon juice being put into pure water this is the ammonia being put into milk and this is the lemon juice being put into milk okay you can notice that the pure water had the you know, this makes it very easy to see had the drastic change like that and like that okay so there's one more thing our graph needs anybody know what it is hmm well we need this this is ammonia with water and what are our other colors our other colors are kind of a pinkish color and uh, green right I'll put the green up here what am I making and I need blue where's my blue right here this is called a what all right go to the head of the class it's called a legend look at this someone's gonna make this cool right? I'm gonna put a little square around it so it just looks cooler okay so the green is ammonia with milk the pink is lemon juice with water no oh, with milk excuse me and the blue is lemon juice with water okay and what is this we need one more thing for the graph what is it what is this graph about we get it's like if you write a book you get to name your book okay this graph is about pH reacting with uh, pH reactions that's what I'm gonna call it oops oops gotta write pH right pH reactions now you might think of a different name for your graph you don't want to call it my name if you write a book you don't want to name it my name okay so isn't that a nice looking graph we got the legend down here it looks nice and clean we got the what's on this side the pH what's down here the drops okay and what's it about it's about the pH reaction okay pretty cool huh all right now what do we got to do next the question is okay so we look at the questions question three says and do we have room for question three yes we do right here question three where's two it's on the next page since the water and the milk started with a pH close to seven why did you get different results how could you explain this that's three so we're gonna leave room for three we're gonna go down here for four because room three sounds like a long answer four says when you added lemon juice to the milk did it curdle up or clump if so why did you think and yes it did curdle up or clump why do you think so and five says when you added the ammonia to the milk what changes did you see in the milk why do you think these results are different when the different from the lemon juice in the milk so i got to put number five i'm going to move up four i need more space for four four so this is how my my lab book's going to look okay now are we on or not yeah we're on okay good okay class all right so we did all this lab procedure so that we could get down and do the serious thinking about these questions that we have to answer okay now if you look at the end of the lab you'll see these things right here these things will help you a little bit if you look at them notice what it says right here it says hint milk and distilled water okay you can look at what's in milk and you can look at what's in distilled water okay now we the purpose of the lab is to learn something okay and we will go over the lab 
when we're all finished with it and we've all had a chance to try to answer them. So in doing the questions, it's, it's not answering the questions to finish the lab. It's thinking about the questions and what's being asked and trying to figure out what happened and why and putting that down on paper and words. So put your own thoughts down. Don't look at what somebody else has put down and put down what they put because then you're not really thinking for yourself. In a lab, if you think something through and you come up with a logical conclusion in your own mind, there is no right or wrong answers. Okay, so you have to train yourself. It's not getting the answer to finish the lab. It's figuring out what the heck happened and why. Okay, and when everyone's finished, we're gonna talk about pH and how it affects living things. That's what this whole lab is about. Now you gotta remember back to when we studied about the macromolecules in particular, about the proteins and the shape of the proteins and the four different forms or structures that proteins come in. It will help you answer the questions. Okay, so with that said, I want you guys to write up your lab in your lab book Put down all the data just like we put down. You're all gonna get the same data because it's all, it's all you can do is put down the data, okay? But the questions and the observations, that's what you need to work on. That's what you need to see. That's Mr. Smith coming to you, biology teacher extraordinaire. And it's been a pleasure doing this lab with you. It's a long, tedious lab. This is the first lab that we've done where we had to use apparatus like the graduated cylinders and the beakers and things like that. And I know it's a simple lab. We got the ammonia and the lemon juice. However, we do learn something very important from doing this lab. Uh, it's been fun doing it. I always love doing this lab. It's the first one of the year that we do that's complicated. And because it's complicated, it takes more thinking, more concentration. Think outside the box. You can do it. Good luck to you. We'll talk about your answers when we come back to class. And I'm anxious and I'm happy. I'm going to be happy to see what you came up with. All right? Take care. Charge forward. Find me a 103-pounder. See you guys later.